bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit up to $250, get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back, all from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number 10 at Belmont Park. It's the two-mile Belmont Gold Cup. It's a grade two race on the turf. $400,000 is the purse. Before we get to the analysis, head on over to drf.com. Take advantage of the Belmont Stakes winner's package. 25% off the retail price for past performances, exclusive clocker reports, betting strategies, and the player's guide. Here's the field for the grade two Belmont Gold Cup. It is a full field going two miles. Baron Somdi ships in from overseas. This horse got good out of nowhere. He's won five in a row. Uh, yeah, and a big a big winning streak. He came off the layoff. Did not, not too easy, I wouldn't think, to get a horse to go a mile and three quarters off the layoff, but he did it last time. So two miles shouldn't be too much of an issue for him. Let's take the upcoming time form U.S. pace projector with a grain of salt. I'm not sure how much pace there'll be in a two-mile event. So high is stretching out from 11 furlongs. I think he could make the lead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he could. I suppose the six could too. Personally, I think the two tied to the C is going to be on the lead in this race, but we'll see how it plays out. I'll be shocked if they go fast. So high is the number one, and this horse was claimed for $25,000 last year. He ran fine in the Man of War last time out. I think all things considered, he had a very good trip tracking a pace duel from a loose pocket. He was only beaten two lengths by Channel Cat, who's a nice horse scheduled to run in the grade one Manhattan on Saturday. Maybe longer distances is what he's been waiting for. Maybe it is, Dan. I mean, um, I'm not betting him in this race, but I have no problem with them taking another shot. Um, he actually ran pretty well in the Man of War last time. That was, um, if nothing else, that was a solid pace, and he was close to it, and he didn't really give an inch through the stretch. He never looked like he was going to win, but he didn't totally quit in there. I thought he ran fine. Tied of the Sea is the number two, and you're right, Mike. This horse does have speed. He showed it in the W.L. McKnight states at Gulfstream, just wiring them, got loose that day. McDermott, he was on the chase against Phantom Currency, who's a pretty fast horse in his own right. Over the Elkhorn last time out, I don't think this is a horse that appreciates given the ground, and that could be a concern because there is some wet weather forecasted for the area on Friday. Yeah, I mean, that could be an issue for him. We'll see if that's what really played into his poor performance last time. I feel like it more, had more to do with the trip and the ride that he got. I'm not really sure what was going on in that race, but both he um, and the other horse up on the pace up at Bromance, they were way out into the track. It felt like they weren't sure who was going to go. I think they wound up going too fast in that race, and they both totally stopped in the stretch. I'm giving him a pass for his last race, Dan. This horse, all four of his career wins have come when he's able to make the early lead. I think he's going to make the early lead in here. And if nothing else, when he's good and when he gets the trip he wants, he stays. Um, so I just feel like uh, Flavian Pratt's going to put him on the front and take him as far as he can. Zayat is the number three, and he's tactical enough. He was third in the Red Smith two starts back after there was a runaway leader. He was actually on the lead in the Canadian International in 2019. I still can't forgive him for losing that race. I thought he had an easy trip that day. Last time out in the Man of War, he saved ground every step. He eased out. He had a look at it at the 316s, and he just didn't have a finish. I agree with everything you just said, Dan. I still haven't gotten over that uh, Canadian International from 2019. I don't know how he didn't win that day. Um, I don't necessarily like any of his races since, and he was bad last time. I mean, maybe he'll want to go the two miles, and that'll be all it takes to get him to the winner's circle, but I'm not betting this horse. Conviction Trade's best race recently came when he was on the lead. That was the Connolly at Sam Houston three back. They let him roll in the early stages of that race, and he just got tired at the end. A couple of even performances since then, both of them on good going. But this is one of those Michael Maker claims, took him for 50 last year, and he's already graded placed. Yeah, Maker did the right thing with this horse by stretching him out to the longer distances, Dan, um, and the Connolly and the Jerkins over this distance at Gulfstream because when you watch this horse run, he just has one gear around the track. There's never any acceleration. You just got to let him get into a gallop and see what he can do. Personally, I don't think he's very good, um, and I don't think he's going to make the lead in here, um, but I like him stretching back out. 
I have to admit I'm a little bit interested in Fantasioso, a horse that could be a nice price for Nacho Correjas. It's always hard to analyze these South American horses, and he was kind of just a group three-ish type over there. In the Elkhorn, his first start back, he caught Say the Word, who's a very good horse, and it looked like he was starting to make a wide run, and he flattened out late to me like a horse that might have needed the race. Last time out in the Louisville, I just think he never got a clear run. He was far back early. He was in traffic. Leperu could never get the stick out and urge this horse. Maybe I'm making too much out of it, but I think he's a bit underrated. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I agree with all that stuff. There. I think we look at him the same way in here. I thought he was a very interesting horse in this race, uh, just based off of his two trips since he's gotten over here. I don't know how good he is, but I think he's really interested in here at a price. Strong Tide was a gate-to-wire winner two starts back when returned to the turf. And in the Louisville, a race that went to closers, he was relatively close. He was able to save ground early, thought he had some minor traffic in upper stretch, finished okay. This horse is getting good for an underrated barn, Mike, and is another horse that can get close to the pace. It's all about distance. It's all about distance for him. His last two figures are the two best of his career, so it does feel like he's coming here um, in the best form of his life. I, I don't know what to say about his last race. Then I thought all in all, he got a pretty good trip in that race and had a shot at it. You're right. He was closer to the pace than a lot of the other horses that came from out of it. So maybe that worked against him a bit. Um, I thought he'd have to improve again. I won't be surprised if he does it. Mike, you liked Kanenos last time out in your New York analysis. He scores at 11 to one. Let's watch that race back. Was it really simply just getting him back out to a mile and a quarter? Yeah, I think the distance worked for him. It also worked, helped um, that Jose Lascano gave this horse an absolutely perfect trip. He saved all the ground. He gets some clear in the stretch, and now he's just going to stay uh, to the end of this race. He comes with a pretty good finish to get up at the end. Um, I do think the distance helped him in this race, um, and he also just got such a perfect trip to get the job done. I, I like that they're going to go longer with him again, Dan, but, man, does he have to improve to beat this field. Bruno Samadi comes in from Europe. Those stamina horses in Europe often have our horses over a barrel. Can't argue about the form. He's won six in a row. He won a group three last time out over an Irish Derby winner, I believe. And he's also won a group two in France over heavy going. So if it rains, you can upgrade this horse. In many ways, he's just the horse to beat. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't disagree with that, Dan. You know the distance won't get him beat. Um, and he's just handled everything, especially recently on this winning streak. Heavy ground, soft ground, yielding ground, good ground. Nothing seems to matter to him. He came from last to win that race most recently off the layoff. Now, there, just one thing to note about that race last time. There was a loose horse in there who was up in front of the leaders and maybe compromised the horse that uh, this horse was able to run down at the end. But still, I mean, this again, this horse was ready to go a mile and three quarters off the layoff last time. And it just feels like he's going to go all day. Maker also has a journey to freedom on the far outside. Joel Rosario picks up the mount on this one. He also comes out of the Louisville, a race where he came from the back of the pack. He passed some horses in the stretch, hopped back to his left lead. He's an honest horse when you give him pace. He just doesn't seem like a true winning type. Lots of seconds on his page. Yeah, that's what I didn't like about him, too. He does like to put in runs in his races. It feels like it often just comes up too short for him at the end. Um, I could use him underneath, and I didn't really want to use him on top. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two Belmont Gold Cup. I respect the European horse. Uh, I think he's the one yeah. to beat. I want to give this Fantasioso a chance. Like you said, Mike, I'm not sure how good he is, and I really am not sure about the two miles. You could argue that maybe he flattened out in his last two races, but... If the pace is solid, I think he should at least come with a run. And your horse tied to the sea, I really can't argue with because the race before he won at Gulfstream, he completely missed the break at a distance that was too short for him. Then he looked good winning that race. And I think he can kind of make cases for his prior to his most recent two races. Yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it. I mean, I just want them to put him on the lead and see what happens, Dan. Yep. I don't love him in here. I almost put your horse on top because I do think he's interesting. I just don't know how good he is. I'm going to try to wire the field with Tide of the Sea. I just hope that Pratt sends him. Two, five, eight, and seven for Mike. Five, eight, seven, one for me. It's the grade two Belmont Gold Cup on Friday at Belmont. We're closing in on the Belmont stakes. Good luck.